All right, guys, we're back. Table assembly. So I got out all my components. We got the longer piece, the 303 millimeter extrusion bed rails. Um, these are the flat wop, the flat T nuts. These are specific to holding the belt um, correctly. So we'll get into that in a second. We got a couple of these guys, some of these guys, some of these guys. These guys are the support plates and the bed. It's, it's not over here. If you're doing the um, upgrade, you're going to also have a heated bed and wire loom. Probably won't need that quite yet, but uh, let's go ahead and get started. So, um, step one, using the M5x10 bolts with washer and M5T nut. So, you got a bolt, you got a washer, you got a T nut. Attach bed support plates to longer extrusion. So you're gonna kind of do something like this. Um, oh, not like that. You're gonna put the washer and the M5 bolt through the rounded part, not through the elongated. Because this guy goes here. Actually, it goes I think like this, and uh, this makes up for like what the washer would typically make up. So then, let's go ahead and do that. Get these to go through. This might be a little tight on the rails, so you may have to. Like none of these, I haven't really modified or cleaned up anything. I'm just straight out of the box. So any problems I run into, you may run into as well. And five T nut. And five T nut. So no washer with a washer. All right. Those two T nuts are on there. Send them through. Um, the rounded part, the pointy part of the support plate. Points out. So the first one, I believe it actually, you're going to want it pretty close to the edge here. I'm not sure if it should be right at or maybe just a five millimeters back or so, two or three, I, I'm not sure. I'm putting it about right there. So it's, it's pretty darn close to the edge. Um, second one, you definitely want this to be perpendicular to the 2020. And probably somewhat tight. Now I would call this the front of the table. The one that's short will be at the front. The one that has a longer 2020 sticking out, this will be the back. So I've already done this wrong. So I'll have to adjust the position of this. Um, and why I did this wrong is because this is the limit switch. And this should be on the front of the plate. So this will go to the back. All right. So in order to fix that, all we got to do is loosen these up slide it. Don't really tighten it down over here. Okay, so we're going to repeat the exact same process. One washer on one M5 and it goes through the rounded part with the washer. The other individual M5 does not like to go through there very easily. The vertical part of the L rail goes between the two, right? Five nuts, T nuts. Oop. Check. Okay. Now the one with that extra hole over there for the in stop, that goes. So this one's the one that we want to do kind of close, pretty close to the edge, maybe a couple millimeters away. In fact, it might be right on the edge. I could be wrong on this, but wait till I 
adjustments many times. All right. We don't know what that was. Things around here just happen. All right, so here is the table frame. This piece is next. It's going to sit about like that. So we can see that this needs to be moved back. Um, So if we tighten this one up, kind of a little bit on the snug side, keep this perpendicular, set this guy on here, and don't forget we still got the bed. Oop, missed that. Okay, line up these pretty darn close to where they should go. Check those holes, make sure they're right. Then what you can do is just Carefully, I'm going to slide this guy in place. If everything's visually looking about right, you can uh, tighten this. And we still have room. That's one of the bonuses about that, is we still have room to adjust that. So we can do a test fit real quick. Um, I wouldn't, yeah, test fit is probably a best way to get it accurate, so we might as well do it that way. Um, literally going to just run the, run the bolts through the holes, no springs, nothing like that, just make sure they go in position correctly. They should almost thread right into the aluminum itself, because these holes are pretty darn tight. Now here's, now that these two are secure, we're going to see how these work. It looks like this piece is a little bit too far forward. So, back it up just a tiny bit. There we go. I can visually see that this one, this one, that is probably as close as I'm going to get. So go ahead and tighten it down. Pull these guys back out. Those are super tight. Pull this guy off. These should be secure for the most part. I'm going to try to avoid twisting the rails, but definitely make sure this is all snug. This guy is next. Um, There's a few ways to do this part. Um, you can really have this position either way, but these wires for the heated bed upgrades, you do not want to sandwich the wires together like that. Um, so in theory, it should go like that. And these are LEDs, so they'll glow whenever it's powered. But this coil here, you can actually see the traces that's going to be the hottest part. So in theory, it probably should go with the hottest part right up against the metal. In order to change that, you would simply have to, actually I'll go ahead and do it. You don't have to do it this way, but it seems more logical to keep a better temperature. Tore the caps on tape. I think it seems more logical to go about it this direction. I don't know why. We have them on the other side. Well, if you do it normal, then I'm sure it will work. And if you do it this way, I'm sure it will work. Um, boy, there's a discrepancy there. It's very curious. I think part of the reason is the LEDs. You won't be able to see them back here because they'll be facing downward. But you'll get better heat transfer going up through that. So it probably is worth it. And you'll just have extra light glowing up the bottom. All right, how I recommend to do this is to do something like this. Um, pick the side of the plate that looks the best. It may not be perfect. Some people actually take uh, pads and scruff up the aluminum so it's like a uh, brushed aluminum look and that actually can help with adhesion if you're having 
difficulties. Um, yeah, we're gonna just start with two sides first. Um, put the springs, bolts through on one side. Springs come in next. This is all set sideways so that the springs don't fall off. Thread it in there. I'd recommend doing two at a time. If you do one at a time, it, for some reason it, it can be difficult. Okay, that's two. want to zip tie through this hole. You may want to zip tie these wires kind of to try to keep them steady. It shouldn't matter a whole lot. Um, you definitely want to prevent these from having a lot of pull. We're going to go ahead and move on now. Okay, both of these need to be done at the same time without a doubt. They have to be done at the same time. So you're going to put your M3s through there, two springs. aren't threading into the aluminum rail, then uh, you'll have to use these M3 nuts. And I, the nuts are included, um, just to make sure that, because the holes might not be to spec. In fact, the intention isn't that these aluminum rails are threadable was not the design. <laughs> it just so happens that they are extremely tight and so it works pretty well to make it that way. In fact, I've had problems in the past with these nuts actually working their way off over time and falling off and the whole thing lifting up. Um, that's definitely something that needs to be prevented. Alright, so you'd also put in three nuts here. I like to put the surface of this even with the top. Um, it can't be much lower than this because the proximity sensor can run into it. So keep that in mind. You may at some point want to put little spacers. You may want to put little spacers in between here to help increase the tension of these springs because especially if you don't have the heated plate, it um, these springs aren't really super solid. Okay, there is one last little piece, two last little pieces. Um, you've got the proc or the end stop switch, so you'll take this M3 by 50, thread it onto an M3 nut. I don't know how far, I'll figure it out later. Somewhere about that far. Run this through there. sure how far it goes through. It just depends on how you assemble your printer. Um, I believe it actually goes pretty far. I don't know, that might be pretty close to about right. Something like that. And then, your belt belt should be 500 millimeters, so zero, two, or five hundred. All right, guys, we got our belt cut. 
this should be 500 millimeters. There's a little extra to spare. If this starts to wear, um, you actually have quite a bit extra of the other material of the leftover belt. So it's okay if you go a little bit long on the belt. Um, to install the belt, you'll need these M5x10s and these flat T-nuts. There's a flat side and there is a slightly curved side. So the bolt goes through the flat side. Set both T-nuts up like T-nuts and M5 nuts up like that. So these are going to compress your belt. The front of your printer, put the belt in on the side of the limit switch bolt. Um, maybe hang a little bit out, half an inch or so. Tighten your belt. These guys just slide right into the T-nut slots, the V-slots, just like that. Just lightly tighten them up just a bit. We'll adjust them later. And that is pretty much your table build. There you have it, folks. And next we're going to do the frame, vertical column.